ceiling. And then speaking of ceilings, like after the loss, Dallas Cowboys weren't too worried about it. Micah Parsons has a podcast and he goes on his show and he's like, oh, uh, George Kittle made it personal. Like George Kittle's my guy and everything. But it's like, if you want to make it personal, we can make it personal. But you can laugh now and then we'll see what happens when we meet you in the playoffs. Basically laugh now, cry later attitude. But there's no reason to say that we're not still on the same level as the San Francisco 49ers after losing 42 to 10 and then saying no we're still the same caliber as the 49ers even though their offense is much better you lost Trayvon Diggs on your team and then Fred Warner is playing at a higher level currently than Micah Parsons and made a much bigger impact on that game and then Dak Prescott hasn't really been the same guy since he's gotten paid his touchdown to interception ratio is 29 to 21 so just overall thoughts on Micah Parsons saying yeah this is no big deal we're still on the same team like you don't deserve to be on the same level as them no I think it's extremely goofy of him Micah Parsons I have a lot of respect for him as a player and I like his podcast a lot outside of this one um, clip here Um, he actually has a very good podcast Uh, definitely worth checking out but to say this after a embarrassing loss against a team that you think to be your contemporary, this is a game where, you know, and the comments all arose from his fuck Dallas t-shirt that he had after his third touchdown against you. Yeah. So I get that it's a painful loss to endure, especially because the 49ers have dominated them historically the last couple of years, but you are not their equal. They just proved to you how they are not their equal. Yeah, I understand Dak Prescott had a bad game, but your defense also got fried in that game. So like when you guys meet up in the playoffs again, not only do the 49ers know how to beat you, but they've also had the last four, five, six, seven, eight years of beating you in the playoffs. They've taken you home the last two years in the playoffs. So like, how can you say that you're equal? They keep beating you. Yeah, my thing with this and my biggest problem with it is George Kittle making it personal with the fuck Dallas t-shirt, but like if any team should have made this game personal, it should have been the Dallas Cowboys. This is a team that repeatedly knocks you out of the playoffs, has pretty much owned you the past few years as soon as Kyle Shanahan stepped up to the plate in Dallas. And this is a team that knocked you out of the playoffs and you're trying to prove that you're the contender this year where everyone was saying you're the best team in football and better than the 49ers. And then you go out there and lose to the Cardinals. But it's like you beat Zach Wilson, Mac Jones. Like it's time for you to prove that you can step up to the play on the biggest stage in Sunday night football everyone's been waiting for a Sunday night like Carrie Underwood says so it's like when all eyes are on you waiting to see what you're gonna do and you have some delusional people picking you to win and putting you on that pedestal it's like you're the one who should have made it personal to begin with so if you're like oh if you want to make it personal it's like no you need to have that Tom Brady mentality where it's like I'm gonna go out there and kill these guys like you need to have that killer mentality and if your team doesn't have that already and getting knocked out of the playoffs and sent home by a seventh round draft pick isn't enough motivation to get you out of your seat to get up then what is And then saying you're on the same level, it's like, here's a better response. They went out there. We lost by a lot of points. It was an embarrassing loss for us. We have some things we need to work on. But I think as we go through the season, it's a long year. It's happened in some instances before where a team gets blown out and then is able to come back and win the playoffs. So we're just focused on getting better every day, not oh no, we're on the same level. It does. It's no big deal. It doesn't happen. How about like, no, it's embarrassing, but we can work every day to get better. And then we can try and get them next time. Cause it's happened before historically, if you listen to a history buff about teams that have yeah. gotten blown out in the regular season, then they come back and win in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, a good example is like how the bills responded um, the year after having that 13 second game against the, the chiefs in that regular season game yeah. where they came back bounce back this game it his comments doesn't um it doesn't show accountability to the cowboys i think it also kind of disrespects the 49ers a little bit yeah and it also adds fuel to their fire they just beat you 42 to 10 so had you not said those comments maybe they're a little more uh lax days ago when you faced them in the playoffs i doubt it but you can say that comment if you want and then now saying that not only were you equal but laugh now cry later they're going to look back at that comment when you face them in the playoffs, if you guys face each other in the playoffs. Yeah. And they're going to have more fire. 
and they're gonna say not only did we beat these guys last time but we have these comments these guys think that they were that where they're equal these guys think that that they're gonna take and and <laughs> run up on us now yeah nice try the 49ers when they face them again they're gonna have even more firepower against them yeah yeah it's you need to worry about winning your division first like you're focusing on the 49ers who just annihilated you you're not on the same class and you need to figure out you're on this if you're on the same class as the philadelphia eagles at this point who are also in your division <laughs> who also haven't won a game because this was a game it's like if you fall down three to three and two versus the 49ers you're running up on the eagles who don't have like an easy schedule but they definitely have a schedule where they could definitely go 14 and 3 15 and 2 like they have a schedule where they're definitely going to be better than you and you need to beat them both times now to knock them off of the division title which you're probably going to split with the philadelphia eagles at best and you also haven't made it out of the divisional round and the eagles already did that with jalen hurts Dak prescott has never been to a conference championship the 49ers are a perennial uh contender to make it to the conference championship i believe kyle shanahan's been there four times already yeah and mike mccarthy hasn't proven anything uh outside of the super bowl win with aaron Rodgers, and then the packers weren't able to get back to the super bowl so there's also a lot of question marks there and then jerry jones holding on to guys a lot longer than he should so I think Cowboys like, no, this isn't a laugh now, cry later situation. And the fact that you're now giving them more bulletin board material, like you were saying, it's like now the 49ers are going to be motivated. Like, oh, you thought last game was a fluke. We're going to beat you 54 to 10 in the playoffs and we're not going to take our starters out. You know, the saying where it's like um, a fish rots from the head down. Yeah. Well, you think about Cowboys fans and how delusional they are. You wonder where it comes from comes directly from their players i mean yeah. seriously you're talking about a team that um has won they have as many playoff wins as Cub, as the 49ers have conference championship appearances since i was born i'm 25 so you have four playoff wins since 1998 the 49ers have done um four playoff uh, championship games since what 2016 when kyle shanahan got hired mm -hmm. so all of that and again the accountability the lack of respect for the 49ers i think it's not gonna pay well and then another thing you need to consider for the cowboys is are you sure you're gonna make the playoffs i mean if you lose to the chargers next week you're three and three and then you know the eagles they look like they're gonna take that division then you also have to deal with teams like the saints teams like the falcons teams like the seahawks the rams commanders it's will not, be tough yeah. the commanders are a tough we'll see how they play but there's all these other teams that are in contention for the wild card. There's no guarantees in the NFL. It's not always the best teams that make the dance. And especially with the loss of Trayvon Diggs, if there's more injuries that pile up, there's not yeah. a guarantee you make the playoffs. You need to focus on winning games, winning them convincingly, and stop focusing on when we make the playoffs. How about you get some wins in a row and actually make the playoffs as well. Yeah. Cause Leighton Vander is now down too. So his status yeah. is wary, but he's had some injury issues in the past and you hate to see it, but you also have to focus on staying healthy and then staying afloat right now. Cause you can't go out versus the chargers and drop to three and three. I definitely think they will make the playoffs, but Same. you have to get to the dance before you start talking about crying later because you're probably going to meet up with them in the divisional round because yeah. you're not going to win your division so unless another wild card team uh, makes it to the divisional round you're probably gonna not make the conference championship again you're probably gonna face a team like tampa or detroit in the first round in their house and those are two tough places to play and maybe tampa bay is looking like hey maybe we can get some revenge versus dallas this year so the NFL is definitely unforgiving. It's a long, grueling regular season. We'll see where you are at the end of the year, but uh, got to be better than that.